the band stuff, like Al, you spoke about band stuff, and we've got to come back a little bit to mind over matter here because um, obviously we, obviously we, uh, Eno you know Monk, Ego Monk, was Ego Monk, well. Ego Monk, yes. How did that? Because they, they're kind of they were co-producing with you, right? Yeah, exactly. So that came about with a friend slash colleague from the industry who's actually on as our music composer on um, on Mind Over Matter. Um, he works a lot with the music industry and he had a, a contact of Ego Monk that he has produced with, uh, produced music with. And he reached out to him with our script, knew that I needed to close my financing and I was actively looking for people to come aboard at that point um, and help us with that aspect. Um, and yeah, uh, he showed him the script and he really liked it. He really bought into uh, what we were trying to do. And obviously, there's quite a lot of symmetries there. So between our script and um, him as an artist as well, um, I mean, so I don't know too much, and this is the kind of the, the ambiguous uh, thing about Ego Monk. Uh, he's an unknown musical artist, do you know? So okay. you, can type him, you can type him into Google, uh, you can listen to his tracks, but you won't be able to find out who he is. And myself and Paul, still to this day, have never met him. And I'm even calling him a him because I've been told it's a him, but I don't actually know that. It's like a bit of an enigma. Um, so when, obviously, our artist in Mind Over Matter, obviously, of course, it's a different type of artist, but an artist all the same, um, is also um, someone that is, is, in the, is, is in the shadows. And obviously, I that was my homage kind of nod to the Banksy sort of... Uh, that was coming to mind, the, the, the Banksy of the music world was coming to my mind, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And I think that there was a lot of symmetries there between uh, this unknown artist and this other unknown musical artist. Um, so, yeah, exactly. So it was kind of like a twofold. He came aboard uh, to uh, help support us in that aspect. But then also as well, you know, of course, like you've just mentioned, uh, music is such a huge part of that. So then, you know... I'm already uh, by default thinking, well, what is the musical track for this? What is the musical score? What kind of things would Paul want to have here? Um, and then actually then when Ego came aboard, it was then uh, obviously opens uh, the ability to have a look at his array of tracks. And um, we discussed it with obviously through his management team, the sort of tracks that were on offer to us and we uh, a collaborative process between the two of us. We selected a track, a track that we felt was going to work well uh, for both of us one that they were looking to uh, have a little bit more exposure on and one that just really kind of uh, met the, the tone that Paul was looking to implement within specifically within that end scene when it all ramps up to become a little bit more sure. animalistic. And um, I think they just both, kind of, you know, and again, it's interesting, right, because we had that track before we shot the scenes. So we kind of knew rather than shooting the scene and then obviously like yourself, Mike, you'd probably be, Sit, you know, ha have a direction from uh, from the director as to the sort of way the trip, but he's maybe going to give you a little bit of free license to say, compose a, compose a piece that has this sort of feel, whereas we already had that piece and therefore we could kind of shoot to it in a way. So, uh, yeah, that's how um, that process kind of happened. And, um, yeah, still to this day, we've, uh, we we've never met and, I, and I, we never will. Very, very interesting. It's gonna, st <laughs> it's gonna stay framed like that. <laughs>